to Amy Reads. So I am doing my very first reading wrap-up of 2018. So of course this is my January reading wrap-up. I'm really happy with the way my first month of 2018 went reading-wise. Um, I did get all the books done from my TBR that I wanted to get done, um, which means I do get to keep the two books that I drew randomly for myself at the beginning of the year. Um, Okay, so as usual with my reading wrap-ups, I am going to um, start with my lowest rated book and go to my highest rated book um, and talk to you guys about what I read and what I thought of it. So without further ado, let's get to it. First off, you'll have to forgive me because I am already in my pajamas, <laughs> which is an R2-D2 shirt. Um, because I immediately came home and got in my pajamas and then was like, oh yeah, I need to film before the sun goes down. So I didn't want to put real clothes back on. Apologies that you're getting me in my PJs. Anyway, the first book here on my stack is um, my lowest rated book of the month. I still really, really enjoyed it. Um, and that is The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I actually did not read this copy. Um, in fact, there's a bookmark stuck in it um, where I was kind of keeping track, but I listened to this on audiobook. Um, and I find that with historical fiction, for me, it's actually better if I listen to it on audiobook because I think that I can get kind of lost in it as historical fiction seems to kind of drag a bit for me. Um, I really did enjoy this. I was totally wrong about the, well, not totally wrong, but I thought that, um, that our main character had like an affair with the miniaturist, but that's not the case. This is about a young woman named Nella. She is 18 and she is basically um, chosen to be married by this um, older man. I mean, he's like 38 or something. Um, and he works in shipping and goods and things like that. And um, so she goes to live at his house. And so he gives her, Johannes, her husband, gives her a miniature version of their home. And so she enlists this miniaturist to make, you know, little things to put in this small home. Um, and the miniaturist ends up kind of revealing secrets and really stirring up things and starting things for Nella. Um, it's very good. I gave it three and a half stars. So I still really enjoyed it. I think it just kind of lost like that half star for me just because I feel like it drug a little in the middle and it was hard for me to get through at times. But honestly, that might just be historical fiction and me and has nothing to do with the book itself. So um, this was one of the ones that I had to read this month or get rid of. So I will be keeping this because I did enjoy it enough to keep. Next, I read both the first and second books in the Confessions of Georgia Nicholson Chronicles um, by Louise Renison, uh, Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging, and On the Bright Side, I Am Now the Girlfriend of a Sex God. So this is a series that has been around for a really long time. These were coming out when I was Georgia's age, which is 14 in the book. So these were, well, I was probably a little bit younger, but I should have been reading these in middle and high school. I don't know why I wasn't. I'd always heard of them, um, but I had never read them. So I am only lacking number five. I've collected all of them. And it is Brittany over at Brittany Freakin' Reads' favorite book series of all time. So I told her I would start reading them this year. And Angus was actually um, the other one that I drew for myself that I needed to read this month. So I read it, and then I also read the second one, and I'll definitely be continuing on with the series. These are really good, super short, can read in like one sitting or one day, like nice palette cleansers after like heavier books or when you're not super sure what you want to pick up next. Um, these are really good because they are written in like diary format, so they just breeze by. Um, it's very much, uh, it is like Brittany said, like teen Bridget Jones. <laughs> um, not very PC, but again, these were written all quite a while ago, so you kind of keep that in mind. Um, and also, it's a bunch of teenagers in like the year 2000, so that's how we talked. Next up, I read Everything is Awful by Matt Belisai. This was a book that I received for Christmas. If you don't know, Matt Belisai is a comedian. He um, started out, or he got famous from doing a Wine About It series on BuzzFeed where he worked, where he would drink a bottle of wine at his desk and just whine about things. It was amazing. You should look those up if you've not. He still does this series like on his own because he doesn't think he works for BuzzFeed anymore. It's called To Be Honest. And then he also does the Unhappy Hour podcast. So 
if you don't follow him on Twitter, by the way, please do because he's hysterical. Um, this was just really funny and it's just everything is awful and other observations. So it's just really essays on him like complaining about things and just talking about what like a lazy, horrible adult he is. And it's very funny. I would recommend it. Gave it four stars. I also finally finished the Darker Shade of Magic series this month. Um, I finished A Conjuring of Light and I gave it four stars. You can read my Goodreads review on it. Um, if you've not read this series, I'm going to go ahead and put a timestamp in here of um, when I'm done talking about this because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Um, so go ahead and skip to here if you don't want to hear me talk about this book series at all. Are you gone? Okay. For those of you who want to hear me talk about this book series, I love The Darker Shade of Magic so much. I am not a fantasy person normally. It's um, not my go-to genre. I have a lot of trouble getting into it. And I just devoured the first book in this series and was like, oh my gosh, like, no wonder everyone talks about this series. It's so, so good. And listen, it is good. And I think that I'm only dissecting it so much because it gets so, so much hype. And so I feel more inclined to be like critical of it, which maybe that's shitty. I don't know. Um, I didn't really love A Gathering of Shadows, which was the second book. I gave it four stars because it was still enjoyable for me. This, honestly, I kind of gave like a three and a half, not even a full four. This is a honking ass book, right guys? This is 600 and something pages. That's a big book for me. I don't know about the rest of you. It, it could have easily left out like a third of it and I'd have been fine. I feel like this book drug on forever and it took me... I read The Stand by Stephen King, which is like 1,300 pages in two weeks. This took me three. If that gives you any indication. It was just very hard for me to get through this. I felt like it drug on. Um, a Gathering of Shadow leaves on a cliffhanger, which I liked. Um, I especially liked it because I didn't have to wait for the next one to come out. Um, but so the first third of this book is kind of like the end of Gathering of Shadows, which is fine, but this story doesn't actually pick up for 200 pages into the book. And even when it does, by the end of this book, I was kind of like, I don't care anymore. I found both Kel and Lila to be pretty annoying. Well. Kel is just the blandest character maybe ever. There's nothing interesting about Kel, unfortunately. Um, and Lila's whole shtick of, you know, I'm I'm so tough and, and, you know, I don't let anybody in. And I don't know why that gets so freaking annoying. Um, and there is some growth there. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to stop complaining about it. I'm going to talk about what I did like. Um, I loved the character of Holland and that one of my favorite parts of this book is that we get lots of Holland flashback and so we we really flesh out the Holland um, character which I feel like is not done with a lot of other characters and maybe that's why they're not as rich to me but I loved the character of Holland that was probably my favorite part about this book is that we really got to delve deeper into his character um, I like Rye and I like Luke um, you know, their stuff to me is a little more interesting than Kel and Lila. When I read the first book, and now that I've read the whole series, I think V.E. Schwab could have stopped at one book and it would have been perfect. Because the first book has a definitive ending and I just, I wonder if she intended to make this a trilogy, if maybe it did so well and there was pressure from publishers or whatever, but I wonder if, um, how that would have done if just a standalone because I thought the first book was awesome. Okay, I'm done. Shoo! Holding that book for so long, y'all. <sighs> it's a chunker. Pop my fingers. Okay, on to the last book um, that I'm going to talk about because it is my five-star read. It was the first book I read in 2018, first book I read this month, and it was a damn good book to start the year off on because as I said, I gave it five stars, and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. So if you watched my December TBR where I talked about this, you'll see where I actually read part of this three or four years ago. Well, I guess it's probably only three years old. Three years ago. And I remembered so much about it considering how many books I read. I think, I mean, I think I literally had read 
I stopped remembering things around page 80 to 100. So I'd read a good chunk of this book and it really wasn't that I didn't enjoy the book. It was that I think at the time I just was in the mood for something different. And so I had it out from the library, returned it, and always thought, I'm going to go back to that book. And so I bought it when it was, you know, in the bargain section. Um, and so I wasn't assigned this really. I just randomly was like, I want to start reading this one. This is the one I want to do first. This is going down as one of my favorite books maybe ever. Definitely going to be one of my favorite books of the year. And uh, it's only, you know, the end of January and I've already decided. This, if you don't know, is um, basically, it follows several characters. There has been, there was a huge outbreak um, and it killed 99.99% of the population. And so um, we kind of, we go back and forth in time a lot and we're following different characters. We follow this girl, Kirsten, who is with this kind of traveling band of um, musicians and actresses and actors who kind of go around to all the little towns that have formed um, since this virus broke out. And this is, you know, 25 years after the virus. Um, and we follow them and they kind of go around and just put on shows and, you know, try to bring some, you know, levity to the situation and things like that. So we follow her and then we're going back in time when she was a kid and we follow lots of different characters and they're all intertwined. And I read probably the last half to, you know, third of this book in one night. I stayed up until like two o'clock in the morning. I was on Christmas break, so I could. And I stayed up till two o'clock because I couldn't put it down. I loved it so much. And it's just, it's so beautifully written and poignant without being over the top or flowery. Like it made me so jealous. I'm like, oh, I wish I could write something like is as important as this. I imagine that I will be rereading this um, many times in my life because it was absolutely amazing. And that's it guys. Those are the six books that I read in the month of January. So I'm already ahead of my reading goal, which is great. And I read all the four books that I had set out to read at the beginning of the month. So that's also great. I will link my February TBR down below, which went up earlier this week, so that you can see what I'm hoping to read next month. Um, let me know down in the comments below what you all read this month. Uh, if you read any of the books that I talked about today, of course, I always like to know and talk to you guys about them. Uh, if you are also a fan of Darker Shade of Magic, which I am a fan of, I just want to hear your all's thoughts on the trilogy. So let me know. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And I'll be back soon with more book talk.